So guys, in the last session, we have seen how to implement dysentery and random forest using Cyclista. And today we will discuss about how to implement both algorithms using AWS SageMaker. So guys, uh, first I want to tell you that there is no direct way of implementing both algorithms using AWS SageMaker, right? Because in SageMaker, there is no algorithm like dysentery or random forest. Okay, I'll show you that uh, what inbuilt what inbuilt algorithms we have in SageMaker. So if I search here about uh, SageMaker algorithms or SageMaker built-in algorithms, so here you will find that there is no algorithm like random forest or dysentery. We have algorithm here like linear learner, KNN. Right, so yes, so here you can see in the case of supervised learning, we have algorithms like CatBoost, KNN, LightGBM, Linear Learner, XGBoost algorithm. Right, so these are the algorithms we have in supervised. We cannot implement random forest or descent directly, but we have an another way. Right, means first we have to create a random forest model using scikit-learn. And then after such model, we can integrate with SageMaker. So here, this is my Jupyter Notebook. So guys, here I'm going to take IRS data set. You can take here any data set. So first here, we want to understand the process, how we can integrate a SQLearn trained model with AWS SageMaker. Suppose we can import some necessary classes or libraries. So first we have imported here our load IRS data set then print test split function, then pandas. And here we have loaded our data. In X, we have input data. In Y, we have output data. Next, we can split the data into train and test. So we can use here train test split function. We can pass X comma Y, test size you can mention here, and random state. We will get the four things. X train means train input. X test means test input, Y train means train output, Y test means test output. Then after we will convert X train and X test into a data frame. So we can use a PD dot data frame X train comma columns equal to iris dot features name because here uh, we also want the column names in the data frame. And similarly for the test data, PD dot data frame X test columns equal to iris dot features name. You can see this is our data frame for training data. And next we have data frame for testing data. Uh, we can save these two data frame into a form of CSV. So we can call here method to CSV at two underscore CSV. So data frame object dot to CSV method, then the file name index equal to false means we don't want to store the indexing in the CSV file. Right, data frame indexing in the CSV file. And the same thing we can do with the test.csv file. And here you can see we have got test.csv and train.csv. Next, we can upload these two CSV file into our S3 bucket. So here the bucket name is hyphen data So this bucket we will create into the S3 service. So the, now here we can create a bucket where we can store the data, sklearn hyphen data. Region will be same here. And then we can click on create bucket. And you can see our bucket has created. Now we will go inside this bucket, sklearn data. And here we will create a subfolder. Let's create a subfolder here. Uh, train data or yes so let's get a train data train iphone data you can take here any unique name then click on create folder similarly if you want to store or test data so we can create a subfolder here like test iphone data next here uh, we have code to upload the train.cc file into the SQL and data bucket. So import Boto3, CH Maker, 
and here we are trying to create a SageMaker session object. And this is the bucket name that we have just created, sklearn-data. And then this is a method that we can call to upload our CSV file into the bucket. So SageMaker underscore session. So this is a so SageMaker session object. Then upload data method. So first argument here we have to pass as a CSV file that we want to upload into the SQL bucket. So train.csv file, then the bucket name, bucket equal to bucket name, which is here you know, SQL and hyphen data. Then key prefix means subfolder name, right? Subfolder name inside the bucket. So this is train hyphen data. You can see here we have created the same name train hyphen data. Now I will run this. Okay, we are getting no error. And this is the path training input path. So this is the path of our train.cc file as three bucket name, subfolder so name, then file name. And then uh, similarly, we will upload our test data. Okay, and uh, this line we can just copy and uh, let's paste it here. So CH maker session dot upload data test dot cc file key to fix or instead of this so we can use here test iphone data and uh, keep a fix equal to subfolder name and then here we can mention the bucket name so bucket name is prefix miss uh, our bucket name we have to define into this Python variable prefix. Next, run this. We are getting some error here. Okay, send this again. Okay, now let's check into this bucket inside the subfolders. So train score data. You can see here we have got this csv file train dot csv file, and uh, let's check inside test hyphen data. So here also we have got the CSV file. Okay. So so far uh, we have successfully stored our CSV file into the S3 bucket. Next, if we want to verify that our data uploaded successfully or not, you can just use this path, training input path or testing input path, right, to upload the data from this CSV file location. So PD dot read CSV and the training underscore input underscore path, right? So this is the Python variable in which we have stored our uh, train dot CSV file path. If you run this, we are getting here output. It means uh, we have stored our both CSV file successfully, train dot CSV and similarly test dot CSV. Next, we will build our model. So now the code. For building and training our model, we will write into our Python file, means into our .py file. So here, uh, this code I have already written uh, into a Python file. Uh, okay, I can show you. Uh, you can see this file classify.py. So in this file, I have written my code to build and train a model. And here, uh, if you want to use logistic regression model, you can use it. And if you want to use some other algorithm of scikit-learn, you can also use it. Right? If you want to use, uh, let's say, random forest, you have to import that first using sklearn dot ensemble import random forest classifier random forest classifier. So any algorithm of cyclic land you can integrate with AWS HMaker. Next, so uh, you have to mention this statement if name equal to main, because here you have to mention the code that you want to run, right? If, if this file not imported anywhere, right? If this file not imported anywhere, then you want to run this code right so here we have used this arg parser 
means here we can pass some options right which are required to build and train model like uh, output data directory model directory or train data directory right all this thing you can pass into this file using the command line argument but this file uh, we will also pass into a sage makeup function right that i'll show you in a while okay and this is the file our file train.csv and we can read the data and we can split the data into train and test means sorry into train input and train output and then here you can see we are using logistic regression so this is a cycle and app algorithm and instead of this algorithm you can use here any cycle done algorithm so in is data set we have more than two classes that's why i have used here multi-class equal to multinomial and the supported solver which is here saga and the maximum iteration is i have taken here 5000 and then here we, we can call pet method we can pass x train y train right and after the model training uh, we want to save this model into a python object so here we can use job lib python module right we can import this module you can see from sklearn dot external uh, dot externals import job lib so with the help of this python function uh, python uh, uh, module job lib we can store our train data another way we have we can also store our data into a form of, uh, into a form of pickle in python we have pickle library but here in the case of uh, awsh maker here we will store our data in the form of job lib so job lib dot dump means we want to store our train model into a file then variable name of the train model which is uh, clf then we can mention the path with the model file so os dot path join then argument dot model directory and then the file name so we want to save our model at this location right into this file model dot job lib so this is the file name and this is the extension job dot job lib okay and then after here we have defined a function to deserialize and return the fitted model the so job lib dot load so if you want to load a job lib based model you can use this function load and then the model file path and then the file name you can pass here right and you will get the model here return clf so this file we will pass into a chmaker function or class so in this file we have to just uh, mention that uh, how we can train and save our model right we have to write the code to build and train the model after that also we have to write the code to save the model but this code uh, but uh, uh, this is not uh, necessary to run this code from the jupyter okay so after building and training our model next uh, we have to create a seismaker circuit estimator okay so first we can mention the role so seismaker dot get execution role and then here we can use this fun uh, we can use this uh, class sklearn so from sagemaker dot sklearn dot estimator import sklearn we can also use some other machine learning libraries like tensorflow pytorch so if you want to use any algorithm of tensorflow or pytorch you can integrate with sagemaker so sklearn here uh, we have some parameters that we can use entry point entry point means the python file that uh, we are going to use here right so the python file name is classify.py right we want to use this file right or we can say uh, we want to use the code that we have written into this file so here we have to mention the file name okay i'll show you uh, what the parameters that we can use while creating an object of this class sql okay, uh, search maker here you can see this class sql entry point framework version okay uh, so here we have some detailed description so entry point means the path path to the python source file 
right python source file which should be executed as the early point to train right so here we have uh, we can mention the path right and that may be absolute path or relative path and uh, we can also mention here framework version the cyclone version that we want to use for executing your model training code default is none right and we uh, we, we can mention the uh, python version here also then uh, we can also mention here hyperparameters image URI. okay so these are the main okay so entry point means file name you can see this file name classified.py instance type ml.m4.xlarge framework version means what uh, cyclone version we want to use here so we want to use a cyclone version 0 0.2 0.0, .0. and then the python version means python 3 means we want to use here python 3 version and the role so here this role object we have this created right, uh, to give the access to the estimator to access any s3 bucket so these are the parameters of this SQLint class define the role and define the sqln object next we can call fit method in the fit method we can pass our training data input path you can see we have this created the path here this one training input path right and in the here in this variable we have the location of the train.csc file right so this variable we can pass into the fit method you can see uh sklearn dot fit and here we can pass train colon training input path let's run this so if you want to use some other algorithm like random forest decision tree svm right so you can also use them in the further classes i'll show you how to use a endpoint model endpoint to make predictions after this training next so we can deploy the model we can create an endpoint here so sklearn dot deploy we can pass uh, initial instance count equal to one and the instance type and that is ml dot m4 dot x large and uh, then we uh, and uh, then we can use this uh, this object deployment for making the prediction so we can read the data and uh, and then we can get all the input data of testing set into a python variable let's say t equal to test data or i log select all the rows all the columns except the last one and then we can make prediction using the method predict and uh, we can also get the actual output and next we can find the accuracy so we can pass our actual output comma predicted output so the main thing is first we have to create a python file where we have to write the code for model training and then uh, we have to write the code also to save the model so this is the code here okay, now you can see here reporting training success just wait for a few more minutes now i think our training is going to be completed okay now training has completed you can see okay next so we will deploy the model change maker circuit learn so here you can see the format so job lib basically we use to save our model our train model into a file and the extension of file will be here job dot job lib file name dot job lib here you can see uh, we can pass file name instance type framework person we can also pass your hyperparameters Okay. but uh, for this we have to also write some more lines here you can see here the arguments number of epochs batch size learning it similarly if we are uh, let's say using random first right so uh, here we can pass hyperparameter like uh, estimators means number of estimators right or like uh, minimum sample splits right or whatever hyperparameter that we want to set here we can call fit method here 
in the fit method we can pass train data or we can also pass here test data or evaluation data right test we can say train data test data right or validation data or we can say test data and then we can deploy the model here you can see sql and estimator to deploy instance type or initial instance cover and then we can call method predict and output we will get in the form of numpy array okay and here i'll show you if i go ahead to the endpoints here you can see we're getting search because cycle on this endpoint and the status you can see creating right the status is creating and models here you can see this model creation time so once we get endpoint for our train model right after that that endpoint we can use for making prediction anywhere okay so and this is the endpoint name search maker cycle plan date i think and time also next uh, we can use this endpoint or we can use this uh, object deployment for making prediction on the test data so here we are getting 100 percent accuracy okay. but uh, don't go over the accuracy i just try to understand the process right the main thing is what are the steps that uh, we can do to integrate the cycle and model with sage maker with aws sage maker and now here you can see the endpoint the status of the endpoint is in service right the status of the endpoint is in service right so this is how we can integrate our cycle learn model with the aws sage maker next if you uh, okay let's use the okay, let's uh, try to use the endpoint on our some random samples okay let's see uh, for code uh, let's search for here cycle learn sage maker cycle learn yeah there is no code okay let's uh, search some okay let's uh, look at some other links so model script and uh, we can define the functions but the main thing is we want to make prediction using the deployment using the model deployment object okay i think here we have got the code uh, read csv csv test file and then request our body Means here we have to mention the uh, format format of the test input data and the search maker and time endpoint name and the content type text csv and this is the make call to endpoint this is how we can call our endpoint and then we will get the output okay and uh, at the end we can delete the endpoint okay let's copy this let's paste it here so go to three pandas and the file name is test.csv rest of the code will be same here and uh, go to three client search maker runtime okay let me check uh, uh, what uh, we have to pass here in the search maker runtime then okay let's run this code and see what will happen here we have to pass the endpoint that we have just created so here we can pass uh, deployment yes deployment dot deployment dot endpoint name okay here we are getting some error okay uh, in the further lecture i'll show you how to use a endpoint right how to use a endpoint of a train model so i'm going to delete this one next once you, we are done then uh, we can delete the endpoint and uh, currently you can see uh, the endpoint now uh, you can see the status of the endpoint that is in service right so i'm going to delete this so deployment dot delete endpoint 
Okay, now here you can see, if we refresh, you can see here, now there are currently no resources. Similarly, we can delete the model here, click on action and click on delete. So, okay, so this is how we can integrate the cycleton model with Erlus HVK. Okay, if you want to use, let's say, random forest. So, we have to import random forest first. So, from sklearn dot ensemble import random forest classifier. On this line, we can just copy and paste it here. Because in this file, we have mentioned the here we have mentioned the code to build and train model. Okay, here we can change this line. So instead of logistic regression, we can write CLF equal to random forest classifier. And now we can pass here highway parameter and estimators. And estimators meters equal to let's say 20. And estimators equal to 20. Then CLF dot fit. Okay, and rest of the code will be the same. And uh, instead of model, let's uh, okay. let's save this. And uh, uh, okay, now let's run this cell again and call the fit method again. Okay, uh, next we will talk about name based algorithm. So so far in this session, we have covered how to integrate scikit learn train model with AWS HMIKA. Okay, next let's talk about name based algorithm, right? And this is an, another classification algorithm. Now it will take some time. So, meanwhile, we can understand some basics about name based algorithm. So, the algorithm name is name and IV. This algorithm is based on Bayes theorem. The first point about this algorithm is that this algorithm is based on Bayes theorem. Based on Bayes theorem. And mostly we use this algorithm for text data. Based theorem. So if we have data in the form of text and if we are using scikit-learn, then the first priority we can give to this algorithm name base. The next thing about uh, this algorithm, uh, this algorithm is about to uh, find the probability of event A and given that event B has occurred. Right? Uh, this algorithm is also a conditional based probability means in this algorithm we have to find the probability of event a and given that event b has occurred so we can write the formula like a probability of we have to find the probability of a given probability of b and that will be equal to probability of B given A into probability of A or event A and divide by the probability of event B. So this is a definition of nave base. Nave base assumes that all features are independent of each other, right? This algorithm. This algorithm assume assumes that features are independent to each other. Features independent, independent to each other. Next, Nebis finds the probability of belonging to a class given a vector of features. It means that uh, suppose we have a uh, X sample for the testing and we have values of each feature. Suppose we have value of feature X1, we have value of feature X2 and till Xn. Means so if we have N features, so in this vector, vector, vector X, there will be N values. 
and the formula we have just seen probability of a given b suppose we have two classes we have two classes yes or no and here we want to get the probability of class yes probability of class yes given the x vector right given the x vector so what will be the probability of class y we have two classes y and n right given x vector so we can write this the probability of c equal to y and into probability of vector of x given c equal to y divided by probability of x x is a vector of feature feature values right so this will be the formula okay let's explore uh, some more about this term probability of x given c equal to y so this term we can also write as p of x given c equal to y equal to okay uh, so x is a vector of n feature values right and this algorithm assumes that each feature is independent to every other feature in the data set so we can write as a probability of feature x1 feature x1 given c equal to y into probability of feature x2 given c equal to y c equal to y till probability of x given c equal to y right so this term we can write is as and okay and this entire term we can write as equal to this pi symbol means a uh, multiplication of i equal to 1 till n here n is the number of features then probability of x i ith feature what will the probability of ith feature given c equal to y right and uh, here we can write p of x p of x x is a vector of n future values given c equal to y right so this term we can write as, as this one so nave base is a classification algorithm which is based on base theorem Right. And what is Bayes theorem? So we can say uh, Bayes theorem is about find, uh, finding the probability of event B, uh, event A, and given that event B has occurred. And the Nave Bayes algorithm assumes that all the features are independent to each other. And this algorithm we to our machine learning algorithm because we always pass the data in the form of numbers. Okay. So this data, first we have to convert into some numeric form, okay. into some numeric form, and uh, that we can call as a here text processing. So while doing text processing, we can convert our text data into some numeric form, and then after what will be the output we will get. So such output next we can pass into a machine learning algorithm. Okay, we cannot directly pass our text data into a machine learning algorithm. First, we have to convert our text data into numeric form. And there are some techniques in scikit-learn which we can use to convert our text data into numeric form, like a count vectorizer, count vectorizer. And the second one is T of IDF, term frequency in, and inverse document frequency, T of IDF. So these two techniques we use to convert our text data into numeric. Okay, so here you can see uh, training part is completed. Next, uh, we can deploy the model. The, what is count vectorizer? 
So first we will discuss counter vectorizer, then TF IDF, and then we will discuss about name page. Means uh, we will see uh, a practical on name page. So what is count vectorizer? In the next class, we will talk about uh, the techniques of converting the text data into numeric form, count vectorizer and TF IDF. But uh, before that, I want to give you a short introduction about count vectorizer. So count vectorizer is a data transformation technique. Means we can transform the text data into some numeric form. So we can say count vectorizer is a transformer. Okay. Count vectorizer is a transformer because we can transform the text data using this count vectorizer technique into numeric form. So if we have text data, so the text data we can transform using count vectorizer technique and we will get some numeric output after this count vectorizer we will get the numeric output or numeric features and this numeric output of features now we can pass into a machine learning algorithm right and then we will get some output then we will get some output or we can say predicted output predicted output okay so count vectorizer and tfid we will discuss the next session let's go back to the code okay so this is the page where you will get some detailed information about how to integrate scikit-learn model with aws maker so first here we have to here prepare the scikit-learn training script means we have to create a python file where we have to write the code to build and train model and also to save the model then we can create an estimator using aws maker we can call fit method and after that we can deploy a cycle and model right and then after we can load and serve a model right and then after we can get the predictions right so these are the steps okay and if you want to see the cycle learn class means escalon class the sage maker you can see sage maker dot escalon dot estimator dot escalon you can pass entry point framework version python version three or two and the hyperparameters you can see here we can also pass hyperparameters here so these are the some important hyperparameters here of this class escalon but if we talk about this argument hyperparameter means we can pass the hyperparameters of of a cycle and algorithm suppose if you are using here random false classifier so here we can pass n estimators or you know, or the uh, minimum samples split right or whatever hyperparameters that we want to use right for our training algorithm so here we have got this uh, let's see if you run this so this is the endpoint name and here we are getting the accuracy 1.0 okay if you want to see the output of variable thread so here we are getting the output in the form of numpy array right okay and i'll show you that uh, here you can see the status of endpoint is in service so once we are done we have to stop the service right otherwise we have to pay some extra charges so i'm going to delete this endpoint and here you can see if we refresh this so there is no endpoint similarly we can delete the model here and also i don't forget to delete the s3 bucket we can delete these two subfolders first there might be some issue okay let me just copy this again delete objects post this next we can delete the bucket here copy this one and paste it here and let me delete this one also okay this bucket is not empty it means first we have to 
uh, delete the subfolders inside this bucket. Okay, next so we can delete this bucket. And next, don't forget to stop and terminate the notebook instance. So first here uh, we can close this and shut down the Jupyter notebook and delete all the files we have created here and close this one and then uh, we can stop the service okay guys so it is enough for today's session okay let's wind up the session and thank you